praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made and we have every cause to rejoice and be glad in him. We are going to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The I am that I am, the ancient of days, the shepherd of our souls, the one who has preserved us. He is the one who deserves all the glory and honor. So wherever you are, I'd like you to join us in worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, in giving him all the glory and honor and adoration. Beloved, let's worship the Lord. We want to bless you, O God. We give you all the honor and adoration. Indeed, you are good and your mercies endureth forever. None can be compared unto you. So this day we say, glory be unto your name. We magnify your name this day, O Lord. We bless you and we say, hallowed be your name. You are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. Ancient of days, that is who you are. As old as you are, you never change, O God. So this day we want to give you all the glory. This day we magnify your name. We lift your name on high, O oh God. We exalt you above all things. We say you are great, you are great, O oh God. Everything about you is great, O oh God. All your works praise you. All your works praise you and everything within us bless your holy name. This day we want to give you all the glory. We want to give you all the honor. We lift up holy worship unto you this day, O oh God. We exalt you, O oh God, for none can be compared unto you. You rule and you reign, so we magnify you, O oh God. Among the gods there is none like you, none can be compared unto you. We have searched through all eternity, O oh God, and none is like you. So this day we want to bless you, we want to give you all the honor, we want to give you all the glory. We magnify your holy name, O oh God. We bow before your throne, we bow before your throne. You are El Shaddai, we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor. We want to bless your name, O oh God. We want to give you all the glory. We magnify your holy name. We worship you this day, O oh God. We bless you, we bless you, and we honor you. Blessings and honor belongs to you, O oh God. We lift your name on high and we exalt you. You are the one who is exalted, O oh Lord. So this afternoon we bless you. This day we give you all the glory. We magnify your holy name, O oh God. We exalt you and we worship your supremacy, O oh God. All your works praise you. All your handiworks praise you. Even the wind that we feel around us, the sun that is shining is glorifying you. This day we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We bless your holy name, O oh God. Your works praise you, O oh God. From the innermost part of us, we say glory and honor belong to you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. Hallowed be your name, O oh God. You are the great God of wonders. We say, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name, O oh God. We bow before your throne. We bow before your throne. This day we exclaim that you are mighty. We proclaim that you are the king of glory. You are the eternal God, O oh Lord. You are the immortal and the invisible. The only wise God this day, we bless you. We give you all the glory. We magnify your holy name. We exalt you, O oh God. Your banner over us has been love. So this day we say all glory and honor belongs to you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. You shine like the bright morning star. So this day we bless you. This day we honor you. We give you all the glory. We magnify you. It's unto you alone that we give all glory, O oh God. All glory belongs to you. All glory belongs to you. You who is crowned with glory. You are clothed in glory, so this day we give you more glory, O oh God. We worship you. We bow before your throne. We exalt you. Ancient of days, we bless your holy name. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. You are beautiful beyond description, O oh God. You are too marvelous for words. This afternoon we bless you. This afternoon we give you all the praise. We magnify your holy name, O oh God. We exalt you, Jehovah. I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due. I stand. I stand, I stand in 
in awe of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in awe of you. You are beautiful beyond description. Oh, to marvelous forward, to wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp your who can fathom the depths of your love? You are beautiful beyond description. Majesty and throne above. I stand. I stand, I stand in awe of you, holy God, to whom all praise is due. I stand in awe of you, oh. continue to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one who is beautiful beyond description. He's too marvelous for words. No words can qualify our God. No words can describe our God. He is just too beautiful beyond description. Let us worship him and exalt his holy name. We bless you. Sikite ababa basi andere bo shanda yaba le bazi anda yama mama kaba sukite ababa le mazaka taya ababa baso koto robo shanda yaba ziki anda raba shanda rabo bobo saka taya ababa li kaba zi andere bo shanda yaba baba sukite yaba le masaka taya ababa baba baba zi andere bo shanda yaba baba sukite yaba Le masoko toya baba baba suki te ya mama. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy. All praise and honor is due, O God, unto you. Le masuki te ya baba baba si andere bo shanda ya ba. Le kaba sata ya mama ma. Le kebo sata ya mama ma. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Kaba ya si andere bo. Masi andara ba shaka tala baba ba. Li masi andere bo shaka taya baba. Le masoko toro bo si ande. Masoko toro bo shanda ya baba ba. Li kaba soko toro bo shanda la baba baba. Li bazi andere bo shaka tala baba ba suki te ya ma. Le masi kite ya baba ba saka taya ba. We want to bless you, O God. We want to give you all the glory. We worship your holy name. We exalt your name, O God. We bless you. Beloved, I want you to think about the greatness of this God. I want you to exalt him in your heart. Make melodies unto him in your heart. He alone deserves your glory this day. He alone deserves all your honor. Father, we want to bless you and we give you all the glory and honor and adoration. Indeed, you are beautiful beyond description. 
You are too marvelous for words, O oh Lord. This day we say we stand in awe of you. We bow before your throne. Receive our worship this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. We bless God for yet another good day that you've seen. And I bless you also for your time joining the service today. The Lord bless you more and be more gracious unto you. A very warm welcome to the service. And we thank God for bringing us this far in our life. We are gradually moving close to the end of the seventh month of the year. And we can only be grateful to God for his great work and mercies upon our lives. For today, we want to conclude our studies on the topic commitment. Now, we started two Sundays ago and we spoke about commitment. And we said our commitment is our readiness to die for God and where we discuss the three levels of commitment, the betrayal level, the sitter's level, and the dedicated level. Hallelujah. We also spoke about the fact that if we want to succeed in life, we want to succeed in anything in life, then we ought to be committed in that thing. We ought to be ready to die for that thing. Hallelujah. Now, last week we spoke about our lack of commitment, when signs that shows that we lack commitment. And we said that it comes with when we have denial in ourselves, when we deny Christ, when, when we deny his work, and we, when we deny his assistance in our everyday life, when we don't acknowledge him in the things that we do. And we also emphasize the Father, let us be careful with the gaps that we create between ourselves and the faith, between ourselves and the spiritual discipline, between ourselves and our, our work schedule, between ourselves and our relationship, in our marriage, in every aspect. Because when the gap widens, it leads to disassociation and that leads to final denial. Hallelujah. And we said that in as much as we say that betrayer is deadly because the betrayer by Judas caused the death of Jesus, Denial is very bitter and very painful. Hallelujah. Now for today, we want to look at another aspect of commitment. And I want to, like we said, I want to look at areas of our life, aspects of our lives that we need to be committed to. Which areas of our life that we need to have, give it more focus and more attention to ensure that we are deeply committed in those areas. And that is what we want to look at it today. Now let's grab our Bible. Let's take our Bible. We want to read a passage from Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs 22, verse 29. It's a scripture that I love so much. Proverbs 22, verse 29. I will read it to two versions of the Bible. First from the King James. King James Version. It said, See thou a man diligent. See thou a man diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean man. See that a man is diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. And I take the same scripture reading from the NIV, the, from the New International Version. It says that, do you see someone skilled in their work? They will serve before kings. They will not serve before officials of low rank. If you see somebody that is very skillful, that is very dedicated, that is very committed in his work, such a person will appear, will stand before kings, before noble people. Such a person will not stand before obscure men. Other versions say he will not appear before obscure men. But NIV said he will not stand before officials of low rank. Hallelujah. Now, diligent commitment or a committed person will always appear before great people because of his high dedication to work to, to, to whatever task that is assigned to him or her. And you can only succeed, like we said, in the things that you are committed to. In fact, in the Proverbs chapter 12, verse 24, the Bible says that the diligent man will rule. If you are diligent, if you are committed to your tasks, you will rule. In that same verse, it says, but the lazy ends up in forced labor. So if you are a lazy person, you will be forced to work for somebody. But the one that is diligent becomes a ruler. That is why in the 22, verse 29, it says that such a diligent person will appear before a king. A person that is committed in all aspects of his life, he will appear before great people. And he will have the hand of ruling. Otherwise, you will end up to be lazy and you will be forced to work for other person. Hallelujah. So I want to challenge you to live committedly 
and act diligently as a Christian. I want to repeat that statement and let it be your watchword for today's sermon. I want you to live committedly and act diligently as a Christian. Live committedly. I want to hear you say live committedly. And the other aspect, act diligently as a Christian. For that is what will open great avenue for us before us and God and before our fellow. Now, sadly, many Christians are not committed in their careers. That is very sad, many, especially when it comes to Christians. But the reason why many Christians don't see success in their, in their profession, in their career, is that we are not committed enough when it comes to those aspects of our life. But many Christians, unfortunately, substitute goal setting with prayer. Prayer is good. You need to pray. You need to seek the face of God and get a divine direction for whatever you do. But that should not replace your goal setting. You need to have a career path and you need to work dedicatedly, committedly to it. So prayer shouldn't be a substitute for, 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 for your goal setting. Hallelujah. In fact, Jesus was telling a parable in Luke. And in Luke chapter 16, Jesus told a parable where he said that, the people in this world, the unbelievers, the people of this generation, where he said that they are more shrewd compared to the people of the light. Luke chapter 16, verse 8. Now Jesus said that, so the master, let me read it. Luke chapter 16, verse 8. So the master commended the unjust steward. That steward who was unjust, who was unfaithful. You know the story. Read the whole, you see the parable. Jesus said, so the master commended the unjust steward because he has dealt shrewdly. And he said that for the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. Wow, that is sad to hear. That the people of this world are more shrewd, they are wise in their generation than the people of light, the Christians. And I pray that as you are hearing me today and as we go through and navigate and see the areas of our life that we need to be dedicated to, that you will become shrewd in your area. You will serve God committedly, dedicatedly, and you will have the reward that counts. Why? Because you say that the hand of the diligent shall rule. And I pray that you will rule. Hallelujah. In my district, there is a slogan that even though we are small, we shall rule. And I pray that this will be fulfilled. This will come to pass in this church. That irrespective of our small nature, we will rule. And that one will come not by just miracle, but yes, also by hard work and dedication. Hallelujah. Whilst excelling in our spiritual life, in our spiritual discipline, whilst we are excelling in prayer, in fasting, in the reading of the word of God, we must equally excel in our careers and in our family life. And I don't want us to be spiritually and neglect our family lives. Hallelujah. We want to look at five areas of our lives that we have to be dedicated to. Number one, number one, be dedicated to the call of God for your life. Number one, be fully dedicated to the call of God for your life. Anyone who has succeeded as a good Christian, that person was dedicated fully to the call of God for his or her life. And I want us to look at a couple of examples. Let's look at Jesus Christ. Then we look at some other people in the Bible. Then we look at our own life. Jesus Christ. Jesus was totally dedicated and fully committed to the assignment that was given to him. In Luke chapter 19 verse 10, he says that the reason why the Son of Man came, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. And throughout Jesus' ministry, he was seeking the lost, he was saving the lost, and he was able to die and say that, I have finished the tax. Hallelujah. You see, as young as the age of 12, when he has gone to the temple to worship with his parents, and when they were coming after, they have taken about three day journey walk, and they found out that little boy Jesus wasn't with them. They came back to the temple, and they found him sitting down, listening and hearing from, pe from the people, the, the, the teachers of the law at that time. And when the parents questioned him, he said, I must be about my father's business in Luke chapter 2, verse 49. Must I not be about my father's business? So this is somebody who was very dedicated, committed fully to the work that God has given to him. I must be about my father's business. Hallelujah. In John account, when he has gone to a place where he met the woman on the well. And at that time, the disciples had gone ahead to the city to go and grab some food. But when they came back with the food and they met Jesus speaking to this woman, and they gave him Jesus food in Luke chapter, John chapter 4, verse 34. Then Jesus said that my food is to do the will of him that sent me, not only to do it, but also to finish it. And the disciples began to think about themselves, has anybody brought him food to eat? 
So he was living for, for the work that he was assigned to. He would make sure that every day he's doing it, he was sleeping, thinking about the work, and his, the, the work of God became a food for him. Hallelujah. Before he died, when he made that long prayer in John chapter 17, he prayed for himself, he prayed for the disciples, he prayed for the believers. But in John 17 verse 4, he said that I have brought your glory down by completing the work that you gave me to do. So this is somebody who was fully, who was committedly doing the work that was assigned to Jesus was dedicated to the call of God for his life. How dedicated are you to the call of God for your life? In Mark chapter 1, Mark chapter 1, Bible said that John the Baptist has preached the, about the kingdom and he was arrested. But in Mark 1 verse 14 and 15, now Bible says that after John has been arrested, after John was put in prison, Jesus went to Galilee preaching the good news that the kingdom of God is near and asking people to repent and to believe. Now my question here is that, is this the same sermon that John has preached earlier on and John has been put in prison for preaching that sermon and Jesus went about the same place preaching the same sermon? Wasn't he scared? Wasn't he afraid? Why? He did that because he was committed to the call of God for his life and he was ready to die for it. Remember, we are still talking about commitment, which is your readiness to die for anything that you believe. Jesus had a call and as long as that call exists, he was ready to die for the call of God for his life. Let's look at other people quickly in the Bible. Other Bible characters who had the call of God for their lives and they fulfill it. So the first aspect of your life that you must be committed, you must be committed to the call of God for your life. In the Old Testament, there is a man called Nehemiah. Bible says Nehemiah has been taken as a slave into captivity. And where he was, he was serving the king there as a cab bearer. Then he heard a call that the walls of Jerusalem is down. And Bible said that when he heard his heart was broken, he wept, he fasted, and he prayed to God. He sought permission from the king, and he went back to Jerusalem and responded to the call of God to go and build the walls of Jerusalem. And he dedicatedly built the work of God. When he had finished, he returned. Let me ask you, how committed are you to the call of God for your own life? I'm not asking you for any specific assignment to do in the church, but whatever God has called you to do, whatever God has charged you to do, you must be committed to the call of God for your life. Abraham, Abraham, he was comfortably living with his father's house. In Genesis chapter 12, God called him and said, Abraham, I want you to leave your father's house, leave your parents' house, leave wherever you are, leave your candle, and go to a place where I'm going to show you and I'll give it to you an inheritance. Bible says that Abraham got up, he moved with Lot and his wife, and they began to journey, and he was looking for a city where God was going to show him. He wandered around, he went through hunger, he went through desert, living in tent and perching his tent. At a point, Lot left him, but Abraham was still wondering because there was a call of God for his life to go for a place that God is going to show him. It is not surprising that when you come to the book of of Hebrews chapter 11, where it lists a lot of people, the category of people who have lived faithfully. Abraham names come in in Hebrews chapter 11 and if you read verse 8, it says that by faith, Abraham when he was called to go and look for a place where he will later receive an inheritance, for by faith he was working in wilderness, searching for the promised land, searching for the place that God was going to give him. With him were Isaac and Jacob. Bible says for by faith he was looking for a city which had a builder, which architect is God. Wow! And he was just moving, wandering, looking for a place that God was giving to him. He responded to the call of God for his life. Daniel and his friends, the same example. At the point when Daniel and co were ready to die because you said that commitment is your readiness to die. When they were in Babylon and the king said that, all of you, you got to bow to the grieving image. Then the guy says that, no, 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 the king, let it be known unto you that even if our God doesn't save us, let it be known clearly, explicitly unto you that we will not bow unto you. At the point they were being thrown into the fire, but still these guys who stood because they were responding to the call of God for their life, even when they were foreign land. Let me challenge you somebody. At your website, nobody has told you not to mention the name of Christ. And if you think you are the minority in your website and you are not mentioning, let me tell you for what we are studying now. That you say that the mark of the beast is not coming as a physical man. It is by your compromising to the new world order. It's by compromising to the secular invasion. It's by compromising to the standard of the world. If you compromise, you are already taking the mark of the beast. 
And I want to challenge you, just as this guy, this Hebrew guy in a foreign land stood on their faith and decided not to compromise, but responded to the call of God for their life, and God delivered and God saved them. Even so that God that I serve is ready to save you, if you can stand tall and say that, I will not bow to any thing that is going on. You will not give in to any doctrine. You will not give in to any liberality that is going on, but you will stand by the word. We compromise so easily. When it came to a point that they wanted to trap Daniel, then they set him against his faith and said, that King, issue of Egypt, that nobody should pray to any other God apart from the God that we have in Babylon. My Bible says that Daniel went to his room, he shut the door, he opened the window. He prayed as never before as he's been doing every day. And he called on the Lord of, that he knew the God of Israel. Even when he was arrested and was being put in the, in the lion's den, Daniel still maintained his call to the God that he knew and he resisted and God saved him. Let me tell you, God knows how to save the righteous from the unrighteous. And I pray that no matter the circumstances, no matter the challenges that we go through in our website, no matter what we are going through now, we will respond to the call of God and we'll be committed to the call of God for our life. Have you forgotten Noah? Another biblical example, Noah. Noah was called to build an ark for an impending rain. Listen to me. In those days, there has never been rain before. So nobody has even heard the word of rain. Nobody knew what rain looks like. But Noah responded to the call of God to build an ark. And he spent time to build an ark just responding. And he was very committed to the call of God for, your, for his life. Let me give you some New Testament character. Paul. Paul was arrested and he appeared before a difficult king, King Agrippa. He looked straight to the king in Acts chapter 26 verse 19. He said, King Agrippa, let it be known unto you that I was not, I didn't want to be disobedient to the heavenly call. I was obedient rather to the heavenly call. How respond, how are you responding to the heavenly call? Are you committed to it? And Paul was such a character that at a point, even the Holy Spirit himself will speak to Paul and give him a revelation of what is ahead of him. But Paul was so much intoxicated with the call of God for his life. He is so obsessed with the call of God that nothing would challenge him to give excuse and a reason why he shouldn't do it. Even when the Holy Spirit has impressed upon his heart, Paul will stand and do the work of God. In Acts chapter 12, Acts chapter 20, verse 22 to 24. Now he said that, now I go to Jerusalem. Now I'm compelled by the Spirit. I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. So you don't know what will happen. The Holy Spirit is kind of pressing on your heart. And in verse 23, he says, I know that in every city, the Holy Spirit wants me that prison and hardship are facing me. So Holy Spirit is speaking to you and prophesying to you and warning you. He said that for every city, Paul, if you dare go, for every city, the prison I am waiting you. Look at verse 24, his response. Verse 24. He says that, however, I consider my life worth nothing to me. Do you hear that? I consider my life worth nothing to me. That is what we explained last week. Denying yourself. Your life is no longer. Number two, carry your cross, ready to die. So he said, I consider my life not worthy to me. Number two, my only aim is to finish the race and to complete the task that the Lord has given to me. So when he's denying himself, my life doesn't matter to me. I'm even ready to die. So forget about the prison and the hardship that the Holy Spirit you are telling me because I'm committed to the call of God for my life. How committed are you to the call of God for your life? I see that wasn't enough. One day Paul was traveling. And in his journey, he came to Caesarea and he came to the house of Philip, the evangelist. Now, when he came to the house of Philip, there was this known prophet who was a very good time prophet because he has prophesied before that there will be famine and the famine came. Now, this prophet is called Agabus. Now, Agabus came to the place where the people were in the house of Philip, the evangelist. Now, when he came, he took the belt of Paul. Then the prophet tied his own hands. He tied his own legs and prophetically said that, the owner of this belt, as you go into Jerusalem, this is how they will do to you. They will tie your hands and they will tie your legs. When he finished, he said, whose belt is that? Then they all knew that this is Paul's belt. You know what happened in verse 12, Acts chapter 12, 21, verse 12. Bible says that, and when, let me read it. He said that, and when we heard this, we and the people, they pleaded with Paul not to go up to Jerusalem. Everybody were pleading and said, Paul, don't go. And of course, by this time, the women have started weeping. Now, Paul, this is the prophet. When he spoke, it came to pass. So don't go there. I'm talking to you about commitment to the call of God for your life. Verse 13. 
Then Paul answered it. Why are you weeping and breaking my heart? Look at it. I am ready not only to be bound, not only to be tied like the prophet is saying, but I'm also ready to die. Commitment, your readiness to die for the call of God. For I pray that in this church, we will raise an army of God. We will raise people who will resist any world order, who will stand against anything that they're coming on, who will not compromise their faith, who will not surrender their faith to God and say that God, no matter the circumstances, that we are ready not only to be bound and prisoned, but we are also ready even to die for you. Hallelujah. In verse, 12, in verse 14, Acts chapter 21, verse 14, look at it. When we, when he could not be persuaded, we gave up and said, the will of the Lord be done. When the people could not cry enough to, to, to dissuade him from going, they gave up and said, Paul, if you want to go, then let the Lord be with you. I pray that we can raise men, we can raise two men of God. These are people that who were responding to call of God for their life, and they were committed to it. Let me ask you, how committed are you to the call of God for your life? In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10, it says that be more eager to make your calling and election sure. Be more eager to make your calling sure. If you read the King James Version, he said, be more diligent, like we have read from Proverbs 22, verse 29, be more diligent to make your calling and your election sure. Hallelujah. In Ephesians 4, verse 1, Bible says that let us live a life that is worthy of the vocation that we have received. Amen. I pray that your life will be worthy of the call of God, the vocation that you have received from God. And that is why in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 12, as I'm doing, I'm encouraging, I'm comforting. That is 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 12. I'm encouraging you and I'm comforting you and I'm urging you to live a life that is worthy of God who calls you. God has called you. And my encouragement, my challenge, my motivation to you today is that you will live a life that is worthy of the call of God. So number one, the area that you must be committed, you must be committed to the call of God for your life. Number two, you must be committed to the people of God. Did you hear me that? I mean, to be committed to the people of God. Be committed to the people of God. The people that God has entrusted in your hand. It doesn't matter whether you're a pastor or not. You could be the children's Sunday school teacher and that those kids have been entrusted in your hand. How committed? How dedicated? Do you pray about them? Do you pray? Do you go to bed and pray that God, the kids that I'm training, the kids that I'm teaching, that God take control of them? You are a discipleship teacher. You are a disciple. You are a family head in the church that you have a group of people under you and the church that we are in, we've categorized the people into various groups and we have made you a disciple head or a family head and you have never crossed even your mind to pray for them one day and you want them to come to church so that you will preach to them or you will teach them. No, I pray that you will be committed to the people of God. Esther was such a committed to the people, his own people, that one day he stood, that he knew very well it was in time for him, for her to go and see the, 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 the king. So in Esther chapter 4 verse 16, he charged Mordecai and said that go and pray with the people I am also, and have a fast. I am also going to pray and fast with my maid, that even though it is not the time for me to go and see the king, but for the sake of my commitment to the people, I will go and see them. And if I perish, I perish. If I die, I die. It means that she was ready to to die for the people of God. Commitment, your readiness to die. Am I speaking to you, somebody? In Philippians chapter 2, verse 30, there is a man called Epiphreditus. And Epiphreditus was such a good servant to Paul. He served Paul. He's a good disciple to Paul. He committedly served Paul by risking in life that when Paul was arrested and was in house prison, house arrest, he went there, shared his life over there. He fell sick. The Bible said that he almost died even with Paul in prison. He had committed no crime, but he shared his life with Paul, risking his life for Paul. Commitment, responding to God, committing to the people of God. There was a woman called Dorcas in Acts chapter, 30, Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, verse 36, all the way to 40. Now, Dorcas was such a good person, a benevolent and generous person that she has catered for the people, the needy people. One day, the Dorcas died. When Dockers died, the people that Dockers have impacted their life, students said that we cannot let this woman die. So immediately they said, no, the disciples are not far away from here. So from Joppa, they sent people to go and call Peter. And when Peter came, she prayed for Dockers, and Dockers gave came back to life. When you are committed to the people of God, there are the people who stand there, who will support you, who will defend you. When Doc has died, yes, even though it was Peter who prayed for her to come back to life, but it was her commitment to the people of God that caused them to call the disciples to come and pray. Have you forgotten about Ruth? Ruth, the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. When Ruth 
mother-in-law, Naomi, has told her specifically to go back to her own people. Ruth said, no, 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 forbid me that I'll go. Don't bid me to go unto my people. Listen to me, Naomi. Where you go, I will go. With you. Where you die, I will die. Your people will be my people. And where you'll be buried, I'll also be buried. Commitment. I am ready to die. Say, so where you will die, I will also die. Commitment. Your readiness to serve and your readiness to help the people of God. You must be committed to the people of God. Abraham was such a character. Now, even though Lot has chosen the best side of the land to go, immediately Lot parted company with, 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 with Abraham. Lot went, and the place that where Lot was staying was captured by another king. The Bible says that Abraham marshaled the force of his household, he raised an army from his servanthood, and he went and fought and delivered Lot. I see that wasn't enough. In Genesis chapter 18 and 19, when God was going to destroy for Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot was there in Sodom. But Abraham, knowing that his nephew was there, he stood and interceded before God and said, God will you destroy the righteous with the unrighteous. It was in the intersection and care of Abraham that Lot was rescued. And I pray that we will also be committed to the people of God in our life. Hallelujah. In the whole book of Philemon, Philemon, Paul stood in and, and, and interceded for a slave called Onesimus who has run away from the slave master. And I'm giving you all this illustration so that you know that the people that have come in your domain, the people that you are leading in the church, whether in a Bible study, whether in a whatever aspect, whether in your home cell, you are accountable for those people. And therefore, you must have the heart of God. There are many Old Testament prophets. Jeremiah stood, interceded for people. He's called a weeping prophet. He was always weeping and praying for the people. First Samuel chapter 12, verse 23, Samuel stood and said that, as for me, let it be a sin against me for failing to pray for you. And I pray that you also be committed to the people of God. Number three, be committed to your family. You are looking at the areas that you must be committed to. We spent the past two Sundays talking about various aspects of commitment and denial and betrayal and why we must be committed and what commitment requires. But today I'm speaking to you the areas of your life, aspect of your life that you be committed. Number one, be committed to the call of God for your life. Number two, be committed to the people of God. Number three, be committed to your own family. Be committed to your own family. Listen to me, especially if you're a church leader. Your first family, your first congregation, your first church is your family. And I pray that we, all of us, will be committed to our family. If we cannot maintain our family and manage them, the Bible says that we are not even qualified to lead the church of God. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. Let us maintain our family. Let us care for them. Hallelujah. In Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 18, verse 8. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. It says that if we are not even providing for our own family, we are more than unbelievers. So we have that God's responsibility to be committed to the family. But number one, be committed to the call of God for your life. Be committed to the church of God. Be committed in, to be committed to your family. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 18. God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah like we just saw it. Then at a point, God stood in verse 19. Genesis 18, verse 19. said that, should I hide whatever I'm going to do from Abraham? Verse 19. Knowing that Abraham, I have chosen him so that he would direct his children and his household and he will keep them according to the way of God. When God knew very well that Abraham would raise his family according to the way of God and the knowledge of God, God decided to reveal and unveil his plans and purposes to Abraham. And I pray that if the plan of God has eluded us, I pray that let us begin to take care of our families and God will give us eyes. God will open our eyes and give us a revelation. Abraham had the opportunity to hear the secret of God because he was committed to his family. Number four, be committed to the church of God. Did you hear me? Be committed to the church of God. Committed to the church of God. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. Hebrews 10 verse 25. And let me read this from the New Living Translation. Be committed to the church of God. That is number, number four. He said that let us not neglect our meeting together. Did you hear that? Let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do. But encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Now that the coming of the Lord is very eminent and is very close. He said that let us not neglect meeting together. As the lockdown is being lifted in a couple of days that we are coming back to church. And I pray that we will not be lazy and lazy in our home. But let us not neglect in meeting together. Let because the coming of the Lord is draws close. I pray that you will understand. Listen to me. Church doesn't give salvation. I want you to listen clear. 
In Acts chapter 4, verse 12, it says, There is no other name given us among that we be saved apart from the name Jesus Christ. So salvation comes only through the name Jesus Christ. So church doesn't give salvation. But listen carefully so that you don't misquote me. But those that Christ saves, he puts them in the church. Did you hear that? And he's coming back for a church without wrinkle, without spot, according to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26 and 27. And therefore, if you have been saved, you must be in the church because the church will be raptured to be with the Lord. So you've got to be committed to the church of God so that when Christ comes and is coming for the church, you will be part of it. Christ is coming back for his church. Those that he saved, he put them together as a group of member fellowship, and that is the church of God. And I challenge you that may you not neglect the meeting together as the days of the Lord are coming close. What church do you belong? Do you attend church at the moment? Do you fellowship with any church? Or you are just a freelance church attendant. Today you are in this church, tomorrow you go to another place. Or maybe you've been enjoying the online service for the past four months that you've even forgotten that a church is it. Because you move from one online service to another, you join this. But I pray that as the lockdown is being lifted, you identify yourself with a particular church and be there with them. Hallelujah. And as you are in the church and you are committed to the church, what role do you serve in the church? Hallelujah. How committed are you in that role also? Do you attend church programs often? Or you are only part of those who come in special occasion, when there is a dedication, when there is a christening, when there is a wedding, when it's 31st night, when is a Christmas? Are you those occasional church attendants? Do you fully participate in all the activities of the church, on the programs of the church? Do you even contribute? Do you financially support? Do you even pray for the church? How ready are you to go back to the church, like I said, when the lockdown is lifted? Be committed to the church of God. The fifth one, and the last one to share with you today. Be committed to your personal goal. Be committed to your personal goal. Let me ask you, why are you on earth? Why do you think you are here? Let me explain a goal to you. A goal is anything that you have agreed with God that until you achieve it, it shouldn't bring you back to heaven. Did you hear that? That is, I'm presuming that you will go to heaven. A goal is anything that you have agreed that God, until I finish this, don't bring me, don't call me home. And therefore, you must be committed to that goal. And like I said, don't ever substitute goal setting with prayer. Just pray and seek God's face. But when you open your eyes from the prayer, set a goal for your life. Hallelujah. The tragedy of life is not when you are not being able to achieve your goal in life. No, the tragedy of life is when you don't have any goal to achieve at all. And I pray that you will have a goal. You will have a focus for your life so that you will live purposely for the goal that you have. As I'm concluding. Listen to me. Be committed to the call of God for your life. Rise up from your lazity and respond to the work that God has entrusted in your hand. Be committed to the people of God. How do you treat the flock? How do you treat your family? How do you even treat unbelievers? Because they are all people that God has put in your disposal that maybe by your character and by your appearance and by your conduct, those people will be saved. How do you conduct yourself to the people of God? And the last one, be committed to the, to the goal that you set. Are you serious with your life goals? Hallelujah. I want you to be committed to God. And I thank the God opportunity for me to share this three Sunday series of commitment. And I pray that you will stand me in and do that God has entrusted in your hand. Finally, let me pause this question. Commitment means your readiness to die for God. How ready are you? How ready are you? I want us to pray. I want us to pray. And before I invite a brother to join us to pray with us, maybe you are here. You haven't been committed. You don't even know the call of God for your life. You are not even committed to a church because you don't even attend church at all. You are not committed to the people of God because you think you don't have an accountability for anyone. You are having accepted Jesus into your life. Today, as we are bringing the series, the teaching on the commitment to one, and I want to offer you this unique opportunity for you to say that, God, I come to you. I want to be committed to the call for my life. But God, first, I invite you into my life. You want to pray that prayer. You want to surrender your life. You want to say that, God, I want to be committed to a church, but first I want to receive you. I don't want you to come to church and grow in the church without growing in Christ. I want you to grow in Christ first. As we are praying. I want you to repeat this prayer after now. I'm praying for those who want to accept Jesus into their life for the first time. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you. Thank you that my God today I'm a sinner and I therefore accept your death on the cross. Now you came to die to save me. 
Today I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Come and rule over me for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Wherever you are, we want to enter into a time of a corporate prayer. As we invite our brother to join us, even to lead us into a short time of prayer. And I want you to take active part in this prayer section. Amen. In the name of Jesus, le papa rabaka roseta le bro sita ando rapaka senda ibabo rapasa le bro re kabro sita le man sande rabaka bro la man sando robobo sikate rabaka bro rasinde ramanta rababo le kabro sinta ibasankande re basuka rasikata holy ghost holy ghost holy ghost re sa bobro sikata re baba shinkande re basuka baba inda rabasuka baba ando robobo rapasikato rabasinkande inda robaba re basuka in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus the word of the lord has come as we all heard it and you heard about commitment. How committed are you with the things of God? You're going to pray. How committed are you to the call of God upon your life? How committed are you with the things of God? How committed are you as a wife? How committed are you as a husband? How committed are you in the, in the work of God? How committed are you as a child of God? How committed are you as a nurse, as a doctor? Do you do things anyhow or you do things according to the ways of the Lord? How committed are you as a manager? How committed are you? How committed are you with regards to the thing the Lord has entrusted in your hands? Brethren, wherever you find yourself, we, our theme is that we are to possess the nation. So wherever you are find yourself, it is the Lord that has placed you there. And the question is, how committed are you with the thing the Lord has entrusted in your hands? We pray for the strength. We're going to pray. The Lord, give me strength mm. to be committed to the things you have entrusted in my hands. We pray that divine spirit, and that would mean the spirit of commitment upon the things you are giving unto me. We're going to pray that Holy Ghost, Bruise over me with strength to be committed unto the work of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, let's begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Father, we thank you for your word that you have given unto our Lord. You have searched our hearts and you have revealed unto us that we are not committed with the things that we ought to do. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, O oh God. We pray for your strength to elevate us, O oh God. We pray for your strength in the name of Jesus. You cause us to be committed unto the things that were entrusted in your hands, O oh God. You have created us and you have trusted a certain thing that we need to do. We pray that, Lord, your strength, O oh God, shall revive our our inner being, O oh God, that we look unto you and the thing that we entrust unto you first than anything that we see. In the name of Jesus, O oh God, the strength of oh God to marry woe, oh. the strength of oh God as a child of God to do the work of God, the strength of oh God to evangelize, the strength of oh God to save the word of God, the strength of oh God to preach to the world, the strength of oh God to win souls for the Lord in the name of Jesus, that we not be limited to things that we see, we not be limited to the flesh, we not be limited to the thing that we see with our naked eye that will not be limited with the things that surrounds us but will be limited oh God by your powers up. that your power continue to strengthen us in the name of Jesus Christ the power of oh God to save the power to do things exceptional the Bible says in Daniel chapter 6 that Daniel was an exceptional person because he did everything according to the ways of God so when they wanted to try him they could not find a way because all his deeds were exceptional we're going to pray that God cost me cost me to be committed unto the people around me how committed how committed are you with the things and the people the Lord has entrusted in your hands as a member of church how committed are you to your fellow brethren how committed are you 
as an officer, how committed are you with the sheep the Lord has given unto you? As many how committed are you with the, with the people you are working with? How committed are you going to pray? The Lord caused me to be committed unto the things that you have entrusted in my hands. In the name of Jesus. Rakabro Sheta Baba. Leba Sukambo Rashikata Yababa. Endaraba Sote Yabasa Kabrobo. Rapapa Sita Yababa Baba. Lebro Shita Yiba Sande de Babrosia. Le Kabro Shita Basata Yababa. The Bible says when Abraham had parted with Lot, Lot had been captured. But the Bible says Abraham they didn't stay there. With the strength of God, he mobilized about 400 people of his servants. And they went to fight for Lord. We pray that we'll be the people who are committed with the people the Lord has given unto us. That we'll be committed to the children the Lord has given unto us. We'll be committed with the thing the Lord has entrusted unto us. In the name of Jesus, not unto our relatives alone, but everybody, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Rapa Saka Bropo, in the Rabba Sika Taya Baba, Libro Sikande Yaman Sinde, Ropo Sukopo Rapasa, Lipa Parapasa Titete, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lapa Robosu, Ropo Saka Pa, Lipa Sinde Yabasakapo, in the name of Jesus, oh God, oh divine spirit, cause us, oh God, Libro Sikande, Rapa Sata. Ya basika inda robo sukapa lepo sukere ropo rapa shinda raba sikapon in the name of Jesus oh lord re shanda kabo sita ya baba we thank you lord with such a strength oh lord we give you glory our god we continue to pray very soon we we'll go back to our church premises and worship the lord together and it's, as we all know what is going on, we're going to pray that the divine spirit shall protect us. Amen. That the divine spirit shall keep us. Amen. The blood of Jesus shall bring healing unto the church. Every plans and obstacle by the enemy as a point of entry into the church, we're going to break it in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are going to pray that Holy Spirit come and protect and lead your church. Jesus. Be a pillar of fire even when we sleep and a pillar of class when we move. In the name of Jesus, let us begin to pray. In the rosy kepa, le prosi kataya basibe, in the re basi kaparopopo, li prasikande yabasandai, mantayi baso prosi kepe. Father, we pray committing your church to your hands of God. As we are coming together, we commit your people to handle. We pray, Lord, my God, Holy Spirit, you direct and keep us in the name of Jesus. Every plans of the enemy concerning your church, oh God, we come against it by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, as we enter, oh God, may every virus cease in the name of Jesus. We pray that your blood we cover each and everyone. No sickness shall be seen in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, that you be a pillar of clouds, that your church move, move with us, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, as we gather, let your presence be seen um, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, may we receive your strength um, than before in the name of Jesus. Rabasuko, Repa, Lipa Suka Brosikande, Indaruba Suka Pandiria, Lipa Paro Sukanda Yabasika, Libo Rosonda Yababa, Indareba Suka Papa. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory. Amen. We honor your name, O oh God, for being amazed this day. Father, we give you glory. Today you are spoke unto us. You have searched into our hearts. And you, have, you know that indeed we lack commitment unto your work. Unto the calling of which you called us for. Mm. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for divine strength, O God. The strength to do your work, O God. The strength to be committed to the things of God. The strength to share your word. The strength to draw souls unto you. In the name of Jesus, we pray, O God, that let your spirit continue to bruise over us. And you grant us the gift of grace, the spirit of grace, to share your word wherever we find ourselves. To draw souls unto you, O God. To walk in righteousness in order to draw souls unto thee. In the name of Jesus, we pray, O God, once again, that, Lord, we be committed to the people you have entrusted in our hands. Our workplaces, O God. Workplaces, O God, where we can draw souls unto thee. Cause us to be humble, O God, in order to draw souls unto thee. We pray that you grant us the power and the strength as Daniel had, that they could not find fault with him, that we'll be able to serve you with all that we have. Once again, we pray, committing your church to your hands, that Lord, your strength, O God, shall cover and protect your church. You keep your church safe from any virus, from every sickness in the name of Jesus. Any point of entry by the enemy into your church, we stand upon the name and authority of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we rebuke it in Jesus' name. Father, take control by your church. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Friends, God bless you so much for your time with us today. And I believe that you have enjoyed the service. There is any concern that you have, if there is any question that you want to ask for this past three Sundays on the topic that we have treated, there is a, a line moving on your screen. If you found the line, there will be dedicated people who will explain anything that you have concern about and we will share the word of God more deeply with you. Once again, we say God bless you for joining us. I also want to use this opportunity to, to remind you that we are closely, gradually preparing ourselves, putting in place all that is needed to return to the church and I hope that you come and I hope that this sermon that we have had in these three Sundays continues will propel you, will challenge you to live a life that is worthy, that is fully committed to Christ. God bless you and wherever you are, I want you to, I want to share a prayer with you as we bring the service to an end. Our Lord and Master Jesus, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Thank you for your word unto us. Indeed, your word is sweet like honey unto us. And we pray that God let us be able to assimilate your word in. And I pray that as your entrance of your word gives us light, may the light eliminate the dark places in our life, O oh God. May it give us understanding, O oh God. May we be able to live by your word. May it rekindle, motivate, and challenge us, O oh God, that we will live a life that is worthy of you, O oh God. Above all, we commit our spirit, so unto you, O oh God. Having brought us this far, my God, into the year, having seen us through, my God, even through this pandemic, our prayer is that, God, that you will take control of us. As we have prayed for ourselves, we have prayed for the nation, we commit ourselves specifically for today and for the days that are ahead of us, O God. May your spirit, my God, take control of us, O God. May the presence of the Holy Spirit continue to brood upon our lives, and may He take control of us. We are taking the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet abiding fellowship of the Holy Spirit, may the same be upon you wherever you are. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Wherever you are, I want you to shout a big Amen. God bless you. And I encourage you to tune in next week to join us another time, 11 a.m. UK time, so that you will fellowship with us as we will look at another aspect of the Word of God that encourages and challenges us. God bless you and have a fruitful day and a fruitful week. Bye bye.
give myself to you Oh. 